In this video we will learn about fatty liver disease or liver stetosis. This is a commonly diagnosed condition usually on an ultrasound scan and which may cause some anxiety. It is important from the outset that we differentiate fatty liver disease that is not due to alcohol commonly called NAFLD non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In this video we will learn what it is, who is at risk, what are the symptoms and how do you diagnose it and how do you treat it. So what is liver stetosis. Over here you see a cartoon of the liver with sequential worsening of this condition. In essence an excess of fat within the liver is the main abnormality of this condition. So in the early stage you can see a change in the color of the liver due to excess fat usually seen on an ultrasound scan or other scans such as CT and MRI as compared to a nice uniform crisp and sharp outlines of the liver. When you add inflammation to this, it becomes a condition called steatohepatitis, which is a progression from the fatty liver disease. And if it is allowed to progress further without any treatment or improvement, then finally there is increasing scar tissue in the liver and leading to end stage liver failure, a condition called cirrhosis of the liver. It is not clear what factors lead to this progression from the fatty liver to the inflammation and once this is set into motion, then unfortunately further progression to cirrhosis over a period of time is much more likely. So who's at risk from this condition? And those who are overweight and specifically those with diabetes in whom insulin resistance is a factor are at very high risk. Those with abnormalities of lipid or fat metabolism called dyslipidemia or hyperlipidemias and Unfortunately, this condition is frequently associated with high blood pressure. So let's look at the symptoms. In the initial stages, patients do not have any symptoms. Sometimes doctors may be able to palpate an enlarged liver. When inflammation starts, yet again, symptoms are rare, but they may include pain in the abdomen, high up on the right side, loss of energy, and sometimes loss of appetite. But these are non-specific symptoms. And if this condition progresses to frank cirrhosis, then features of chronic liver disease appear. As I mentioned previously, this condition is normally diagnosed, usually following blood tests for other reasons or scans that are performed. To diagnose this condition, you have to have a high index of suspicion for people in these categories. But it is important that these four conditions are met, which include demonstration of hepatic stetosis or fatty liver by imaging, that is scans or biopsy, exclusion of significant alcohol consum consumption, exclusion of other causes of fatty liver, of which there are many, and absence of coexisting chronic liver disease due to other causes. The diagnosis must confirm the condition. It should settle whether or not there is inflammation or fibrosis that is scarring within the liver or whether it has progressed to chronic liver disease stage. Blood tests are an important part of this process. There is a panel of tests called liver function tests and in particular the amino transferases AST and ALT. These denote that when there is damage to the liver these enzymes in steatohepatitis inflammation of the liver then escape from the liver and enter the bloodstream. And this derangement, when seen, should raise the suspicion. Apart from that, other causes of deranged liver function tests, such as viral hepatitis and other features of chronic liver disease, have to be investigated. Scans are an important non-invasive way of diagnosis. Typical features are seen with ultrasonography, CT, MRI scan. However, these would not differentiate normally between fatty liver disease and those with steatohepatitis or fibrosis. And that's where the newer modalities such as MRI spectroscopy or elastography, which assesses fibrosis within the liver, are useful. The gold standard for the diagnosis is a liver biopsy, but you don't need it in every patient. You'd only do it if you're worried that fibrosis may have developed, for which you do not have a good enough explanation, or if the serum ferritin levels are fairly high, specifically in patients who is greater than 45 and has obesity and diabetes. And the biopsy will establish the diagnosis as well as its extent. In terms of treatment for most patients, general measures and weight management would be enough to reverse this progression and to return the liver to a healthy state as seen over here. 
So in general measures, patients with fatty liver disease should think about immunization, specifically against hepatitis B. They must have their serum lipid assessed and treat hyperlipidemia with lipid-lowering agents as well as diet. And the control of diabetes is essential to get on top. Weight management may include diet and exercise. And patients with fatty liver or liver steatosis ought to avoid a high alcohol consumption that will worsen the condition and cause further progression. What medical therapy might help? So those patients with non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, that is fatty liver with inflammation, may benefit from taking vitamin E. Those with diabetes and inflammation need to take medication to control the diabetes. Increasingly newer and more effective agents are coming on the market with a much longer duration of action. And finally, within this cohort would be patients who would benefit from bariatric surgery or weight loss, which is very effective in managing this condition as well. Now, it is important that once this condition, the steatohepatitis, is diagnosed, that the liver function tests are monitored just to see that the treatments are effective and that can be at three or six monthly intervals, as well as assessing the liver for development or progression of liver fibrosis. This completes this brief talk on fatty liver disease. If you have any comments, please do share.